So to begin with, we're going to be learning about resistors in parallel. Later on, we're going to be combining what we, th what we learn about resistors with in parallel with what we know about resistors in series. Now, as we know, resistors can be connected to a circuit in two different ways, illustrated in these photos. They can be connected in series with one another, like the resistors on the left, or they can be connected in parallel with each other, like the resistors on the right. In series circuits, the current will flow through each resistor one at a time, sequentially, right? In parallel circuits, we have something quite different happening. The current will split up at each branch of the circuit and pass through the various different branches with different strengths, depending on the resistance of each branch. Now the amount of current that passes through each branch of the circuit will depend on the resistance of the branch. So if R1 and R2 are the same, the same current will flow through them. If R1 and R2 are different, then that will change the amount of current that flows through each one. So the voltage drop across each branch is the same. This is because if we have a power source with a potential of, you know, plus 12 volts over here and plus zero over here, the voltage does not drop across any of the wires. So each resistor has to have a voltage drop, in this case, of 12 volts. And this is what we can use to figure out the current through each one. More current will flow through the branches with less resistance, because multiplying the resistance and the current together gives us the voltage drop across the resistor. So if the voltage drop is going to stay the same, then low resistors have high current and large resistors have small current. So the voltage drop across each resistor will be the same, and we can use this to find the current through each one. You can see an example that I've drawn over here. Uh, v will equal I1 R1, that is the current and times the resistance of one branch, which will equal the current times resistance of the next branch, which will equal the current times resistance of the next, and so on. In this diagram, there are only two branches. So I1, using a simple rearrangement of the first equation, can be found with V over R1, I2 can be V over R2, I3 can be, and so on and so forth. We can see that in this diagram, we have a voltage drop of four volts across each resistor. So if V equals IR, and the top resistor has a resistance of four ohms, then to get two numbers which multiply together to form four, the other number will have to be one. One amp times one ohm equals one volt. So one amp times four ohms equals four volts. And similarly, one ohm times four amps equals four volts. So for each resistor, the voltage drop across them is the same. Now the total amount of current that flows through a parallel circuit does not change. Remember that current is caused by the movement of electrons, and we only have so many electrons passing through the wire per second. Adding the currents through each resistor together will let us find the total current that must be flowing into that set of resistors. So the total current flowing through a set of branches is the sum of the currents in each branch. If we take the current through here, one amp, and the current through here, four amps, they add together to produce five amps. So there are five amps flowing out of the pair and five amps flowing into the pair. So I total equals the sum of the current in each branch. That is I1 plus I2 plus I3 and so on. So we know from Ohm's law that the total voltage over the total resistance is equal to the current through the circuit, right? So this equals I total. Now in a parallel circuit, this will equal I1 plus I2 plus I3 and so on, which means we can substitute in I1, I2, I3 for V1, R1, V2, R2, V3, R3, and so on, all according to Ohm's law. So this equation follows from this equation. But hang on, we know something about the voltage drops across, across each resistor. V is going to be the same in every case. V total equals V1 equals V2. So dividing both sides by V, we end up with this equation. One over R total, equals one over R1 plus one over R2 and so on. So if we apply this equation to these resistors over here, 
we can see that their total resistance must be 0 0.8 ohms. The 4 volt power supply puts out a 5 amp current. We saw this before. So if V equals 4 and I equals 5, then R must equal 0 0.8. Otherwise, we can't satisfy Ohm's law. That means the effective resistance of these resistors, or the total resistance, is only 0 0.8 ohms, less than the 1 ohm resistor. So the total resistance of parallel resistors is less than that of the individual resistors. So the total resistance is going to be less than 4 ohms and less than 1 ohm. The greater the number of branches, the smaller the number is going to get, because the equation tells us 1 over r. And the bigger 1 over r gets, the smaller r gets. We can see that if we have four 1 ohm resistors in series, then using that equation, 1 over r total will equal 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 1 ohm, and so on, which will give us an answer of 4, 1 times 4. But if 1 over r total is 4, that means r total must be only 1 quarter. So the more resistors we have, the less the resistance gets. This is quite different to the way that resistance changes in series circuits. In fact, it's quite the opposite. If we add resistors in series with one another, we increase the resistance. But if we add resistors in parallel with one another, we decrease the resistance. As the number of branches increases, the current in each branch uh, will decrease, assuming that we draw the same current from the power source. It's because we have to split the current among more different branches. However, the more branches we get, the lower the total resistance gets, and the more current we draw in the first place. Now, what happens if we put a very high resistance resistor in parallel with the others? Well, because the voltage drop has to be the same across each resistor, the current through the one kilo ohm resistor will be much, much smaller than the other resistors. If there's a current of perhaps five amps through each of these, quite a large current, uh, then that means the total voltage drop through each one will be five volts. If we want to drop five volts across one kilo ohm, then we only have five milliamps, that is five thousandths of an amp. So there will be almost no current through the top resistor. If on the other hand, we do the opposite and add a resistor with a very, very low resistance, one milli ohm, that is one thousandth of an ohm, then in order to reach the voltage drop across all of these, there's going to need to be a lot of current flowing through the top resistor, which means the top resistor will basically draw all the current away from the other resistors, so that only a very small current flows through each of the others. So this is the end of the theory. We've learned a bit about the voltage drop across resistors that are in parallel, and the current through resistors that are in parallel. Let's go on to some questions to check if you've got it all through.